So good morning, everyone, and I'm busy yakking and didn't realize that it's 1032, so I'll have to somehow make up two minutes today. Um, you know me, that'll happen pretty simply, but welcome to worship on this glorious day that the Lord has made, this Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all of you out there who serve and, and take on that role of a father figure. Um, all of those gentlemen out there that have wanted to be fathers and unable to be, be that person in life, happy Father's Day to you because I know that all of us, just as our mothers all serve in wonderful ways, the fathers have a role that is very challenging and difficult to be uh, replaced easily. Um, this last week, as I reflect upon it, I had the joyous opportunity uh, to spend the last 10 days with my grandkids, which was just so awesome. We had to take them back to their parents. Can you believe that their parents wanted them back? I'm still trying to figure that one out. So, no, it was a long journey of which Vicki and I just finished up with about an hour ago uh, and time to get here and lead worship today. So, um, don't expect great things out of me, like any Sunday, but this Sunday maybe any time. But I am so pleased to be here and so pleased to have gotten, I think, about a 900-mile round trip over three days uh, behind us. We got Mike Malone with us today. Hi, Mike. Thank you for being here. And uh, I know it's been a very challenging uh, year plus to be secluded uh, and having a hard time to get out and enjoy people outside of your walls. So I thank you. I thank your aid for bringing you. I forgot what your name was already. Natalie. What is it? Natalie. Allie. Natalie. 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 Natalie, thank you for being here too. So I don't usually like to call out first timers and make them embarrassed and all that, but there is nothing that you can do in this house that is going to be uh, wrong. So we invite you to join as you're able in all we say and do. So as I've said to all of you below uh, before, all of the bold print is something that I invite you to join in in sharing and participating in. As always, we don't have any singing as of yet due to COVID in our presence 
We do have Candy Lowry is going to be our cantor today, joined in music with Miss Frances as always. Um, we've got a few readers out here. I think the Mr. and Mrs. Schwinky clan is going to lead us in our readings and, and prayer. A little fist bump. Don't leave her hanging, Chris. Thanks. Um, so yeah, and it's a celebration day as Lori celebrates her birthday. I am not going to say how many years it is. You guys, it's a club that she has joined into. And Gary, you too might invite her to sit at that table, that special, special table. Anyway, uh, more to follow. So as always, I invite you to flip over to the front cover of our bulletin and let us join together <clears throat> in our vision statement. We are a faith community in partnership with our neighbors, discerning needs with dignity and respect in service together to benefit all of God's kingdom through Christ. And now I invite you to sit back and enjoy our prelude played by Francis Recessional on St. Anne. But as I do so, I also want you to hold B. Stevens in prayer. She is at Robert Packer in Sayre right now. Um, has been for the last couple of days uh, infection and dehydration. She is stable, doing well. Uh, Mike was going to be here today. Um, he came in briefly and helped set up the uh, t uh, technology, but then he departed so he can be with mom. Uh, so now we have Peg, who's the rock solid soul up there. She is supported by Vicki. So she's on video, so if you see any video issues, we know where to point the finger. But anyway, sit back and enjoy our worship time together. Strength is commanding the wind and sea to obey. Strength, Strength is wielding a slingshot in the face, in the face of a of raging, raging giant. giant. Strength is accepting vulnerability from inside the boat. Strength, Strength is standing in solidarity with the powerless. powerless. Strength is turning a cheek. Strength, Strength is loving an enemy. We come to worship a God who redefines our vision of strength. And now I invite you all to stand as you're able for our confession and forgiveness as we come together as a sinful people by nature. Now I had to share with the fact that Lily has been passing out buttons to 
all of the fathers today uh, in honor of Father's Day, my button happens to say, because I said so. <laughs> I like it, huh? Stand, because I said so. Let us join together. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and things left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, have or forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please be seated and may we sit back and enjoy Candy and Francis as they share with us a favorite of mine, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Please stand for the Kyrie.
The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us by your power, preserve us by your wisdom, instruct us, and by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and as we prepare to hear our first reading, a reading from Job, one of the lessons that I actually love. So I think this is a text that you either love or hate. I got to be honest. It's an intriguing and in-depth lesson in life from my perspective if you read Job in its entirety. It's easy to embrace our faith in God when things are going well. But what happens when life takes a turn and things don't go so well? Do we have the faith to trust in God then? Let's listen to how God responds to Job's anger of God. A reading from Job, chapter 38. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, This far you shall come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, plying their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God, God spoke, spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their peril. They staggered and reeled like drunkards, and all their skill was to, of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper and silenced the waves of the sea. Then they were glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people. In the council of the elders, let them sing hallelujah. Thanks, Chris. And now, hey, it's children's time, and I know we have a few children out there, so I invite you to come up if you would like, and we can have our little time together. Angelina, there's Lily. Daniel's here today. Awesome. What's up, Bunny? Living the dream. You got four or five more weeks of school? What do you think? We're just one more. <laughs> yeah, I think Wednesday's it, right? So how about we sit out here? So I wanted to talk to you all about fears. Do you guys have any fears? What are you afraid of, Lily? The dark? Yeah, I know. The dark kind of freaks me out sometimes. How about it, Angelina? Heights. Heights? Your fear of heights, yeah. Yeah, so you don't do much tree climbing, do you? I really need somebody to help me fix the leaky roof on my house. No? <laughs> You're not the girl. How about it, Daniel? You don't 
You're a tough guy. You don't have any fears, do you? Spiders? Spiders? I'm telling you. So I'm with you, buddy. Spiders. Me and spiders don't get along. There is a place for spiders. It's not in my house, even though we have them. It's not in the church, even though we have them here too. But, but you know what else freaks me out? Snakes. And I don't know that I'm so afraid of snakes as it is they startle me. They just scare the bejeebies out of me. And I have to get my heart back in my chest. So today, I'm going to read you a story, but Mr. Schwenke actually read us some, a little bit of the same kind of message in the psalm about the stormy waters and the rough seas. Have you ever heard this the story in the Gospels before about the disciples and Jesus in the boat out on the sea? Oh, it's an awesome story. Awesome. So they're out in this boat. And you know, these boats in this day are not the big ones with the big old motors on them that we have today. They were a small boat. And keep in mind, they probably had maybe 15 people or maybe a few more in this boat. And they're rowing it with paddles, right? And then Jesus, he goes in the back of the boat and curls up and falls asleep. Now what do you think happens while Jesus is asleep? There is this big storm. Now imagine it. You guys are all in a boat. So let's sit here like we were in the boat. All right, Daniel and I are together. So Lily and Angelina, you got to sit out here, all right? So we're in the boat, you're in the front of us, and Daniel and I, we're rowing the boat. Row the boat, buddy. Come on, row the boat. We're rowing, and we're rowing. Now, what happens? The wind comes up. So we got wind happening. What's the wind sound like? Help me out, everybody. So now, the, because of the wind, the waves are getting taller and taller. So what's happened to the boat? Well, come on, try to work with me. We're, we're bouncing over the waves. Can you imagine how scary that must have been? Pretty freaky, huh? You don't like that, do you, Lily? Would you, or would you like going in a boat like that? You would? Wow. How about it, Grandma and Grandpa? No, you don't think so? So the boat is just tossing and turning. And what's happening? Were the disciples afraid, do you think? I think they were, yeah. And it actually says that they were afraid. So out of their fear, they go to the back of the boat and they wake Jesus up. Jesus, don't you care whether we perish? Oh, you have little faith, Jesus says. And he says, peace be still. And the waters calm. Just like that. But not one of the many miracles that Jesus shows us all. And the disciples were safe. So let me ask you, if you have to go to a high place, Angelina, or um, Lily, if it is dark, or God forbid we see a spider, Daniel, oh my gosh, what do you think we could do when we're afraid? What do you think, Lily? Put your head underneath the pillow. That's a good practice. But how about we pray to Jesus? And Jesus, we can ask Jesus for strength. We can ask him for comfort. And we could even ask him to shoo that little spider away from our presence. I think those are good solutions. And what this lesson talks about today is don't be afraid. Trust in God. And we can get through so much challenge in our life when we do so. Shall we pray? All right. Dear Jesus, we thank you for being the strength in our weakness. Help us to not be fearful, but to trust in you so that you can guide our ways forward. In your name we pray. Amen. So now, people, let's stand up. Uh, uh, uh. Oh my gosh. 
I've been in a car for a long time. So, congregation, if you would help me, bless our children as they were blessed at their baptism. Children of God, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Blessings. I, how do you like that button, Lily? That's pretty cool. You see it? What does it say, Daniel? Because I said so, get back to your seat. <laughs> Thanks for coming up. Please stand. Oh, you're already standing as you're able for the gospel acclamation. According to St. Mark, the fourth chapter, glory to you, O Lord. This reading from Mark today speaks well about the disciples and what they're truly, truly made of, doesn't it? But is it also telling us of what we are truly and often made of? When things are going well, it's great. Jesus is their wonderful teacher and companion. But now when things are not going so well, not going as planned, when they become filled with fear of perishing, they react. How do we react when fear comes upon us? When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with them. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him and said teacher do you not care that we are perishing he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm he said to them why are you afraid have you still no faith and they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and sea obey him? This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you as you are seated today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it would be nice if I could say, if I could say because... I said so. I don't have those powers, Chris. I'm working on them, but that's probably not going to be in my ballywag anytime soon. So I'm guessing that some of you here can remember the nuclear drills at school. Anybody? Remember the nuclear... Oh my gosh. Think about them. We all had to crouch underneath our desks, cover up our heads, to protect ourselves? What was this all about? This was a response from my perspective to the 1960s fears driven by the threats of nuclear annihilation due to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Many people, as a result of this, built their own nuclear shelters. How many, anybody got one? No, not one that you want to claim. Because we look back on this, then we kind of, huh, okay. But they built these shelters to protect themselves and their families. And, uh, and some of these shelters in our nation are still stocked and ready to go today. Because the fears are still there. 
Now, when Vicki and I lived in Arkansas, many people had these concrete lined holes in the ground near their homes. And the low water table in Arkansas, I'm sure they were kind of like a nice little indoor swimming pool. But they had them nonetheless, and they were called Frady holes. Many of them, too, were built in the 60s as a result of the uh, missile crisis. But today, since most homes in the area do not have basements because of the water table, these same holes provide safety to numerous people throughout the tornadoes that have a tendency to roll through Tornado Alley. Today, I think we're a society filled with enormous amounts of fear. Don't you think? I, I, I don't know how to cut, slice it or dice it any different, but do you know that from August of 2019 through May of 2021, gun sales broke records each month up through May. Gun sales broke records each month from August of 2019 through May of 2021. Driven mostly by new owners of guns. Did you know in the first quarter of 2021, 5.9 million firearms were sold? In 2020, nearly nine, er, yeah, in 2020, ne nearly nine million Americans became first-time gun owners, and that number continues to climb. Now, according to a survey that was conducted by the University of California, fear of being targeted by violence during the pandemic, uh, coupled with mass shootings coupled with political and social unrest are some of those main drivers that drove first-time gun owners to solicit and purchase that gun. I think that's kind of scary. I was trained by the military in gun use, and I was scared of some of the people in the military who had guns because they did not know how to properly handle them. Fear is an emotion, and it's an emotion that can lead to some of the most bizarre reactions within ourselves. Much of our political system is hinged upon connecting to our deeply rooted, deeply seated personal fears. And oh, how this approach is effective, is it not? Our media, our advertising, our government approach feeds off of the reality that fear sells. Fear sells. And oh yes, and many people are getting rich off of our reactions to fear. Now let's think of a new way. As we look at our reading from Job this morning, many dislike this Job message, but it's a book most people, as I mentioned earlier, either love or hate. But I love Job. You see, Job was a faithful man, more faithful than many in society, and really trusted that God would be there for him. One who trusted in the Lord, one who the Lord had provided so much, and then this little shady deal between God and the devil took everything that Job had, for the most part, away from him to include his good health. Now, what should any faithful person do when struck down such as this? Following Job's approach, he prayed. He prayed diligently. He prayed continuously, and he prayed, after a while, angrily. He prayed so hard, yet his prayers were not being answered as he had hoped. 
You see, Job had this idea that he should be rewarded since he had always been faithful to God. And this reward versus um, condemning is often a message that we, we see in a lot of the Old Testament. God should respond faithfully to him. And in Job's prayers, he expressed his angering words towards God. And eventually, God responded. But let's be clear. Our God does not follow a principle between reward and punishment in our godly ways, in our Christian ways. Not a journey as Job was hoping for. So I suggest that Job's response towards God was based on his own personal fears. And now again in our gospel reading from Mark, the disciples are stressed out. Wouldn't you be stressed out? Being in a little rickety old um, wooden boat, paddling away, not having the power to put the nose into the wind and bounce out the storm. The raging sea came up around them. They were taking on water and in danger of seeking or sinking. <laughs> yeah, sinking. Sinking way offshore. And oh, by the way, do we need to remind you that some of these men on this, these boats were seasoned fishermen. So if they couldn't handle the sea, this must not have been an ordinary storm. Because if it were, they would have dealt with it themselves, right? But instead, there was only one thing that they felt that they could do, that they hoped would save them, and that was by waking up Jesus. Immediately, Jesus rebuked the wind and the raging sea, and all was at peace once again. As I thought about this reading, the question which preoccupied me was, why did Jesus say, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Isn't this the principal question of our faith at times? Whatever, where we do place our hope, where we do trust above all other things, and how do we demonstrate that trust within our lives when fear comes upon us? We all know that when life is easy and everything is fine, then it doesn't take too much to lean on our faith. To have faith in our Lord, to have faith with the one who walks by us each and every day. We can almost take it for granted, right? But when fear strikes us, when something of once we had is taken from us, where is your faith now? When fear strikes, how far do we go to try and resolve our problems ourselves? To take this struggle into our own hands before turning to God to help us. We all experience storms in our lives, do we not? And what comes to mind for me is the unrest that is continuing to go on between Palestine, Palestine and Israel. Sirens are heard throughout the region to come and fight the fires due to the missile attacks. Ambulance sirens are going out to retrieve the injured. And the sirens of the police are heard to maintain order. We have limited experiences of this magnitude in our country, but place yourselves in the midst. But when, does, when crisis does occur for us, is our uh, first response to panic? Or 
do we turn to ask God and ask God to help us, to give us the strength and the courage that we need in order to face the situation that we're confronted with. We all need to remember that it's never the fear that makes us stronger. It's what we choose to do with that fear. If we choose to lay it at the foot of the cross and say that we give this up to you, O Lord, then in faith and trust, know that God will help us through. And we can remember what it says in the book of James. James says, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy. Because you know the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete and lack nothing. Brothers and sisters, we have a God who walks with us, not only in the easy times, but also in the storms and the fears that we face in our daily lives. God is the one who can calm the storms for us. God is the one who can bring us the hope and the knowledge that we need to face our fears, however dire we feel the situation is. And as Christians, we don't walk this journey of life on our own. Look around us. We walk with a God who walks to know each and every one of us. To be there for us in everything we have to face in our lives. Trust. When we call upon, upon our Lord, our Lord is with us. I hope we have the confidence and the faith to know that God will be there to guide and to strengthen us in any situation. Sadly, far too often, we act too like the disciples in that boat. Who are afraid on the boat, we try to face the problems ourselves in which we encounter. We look to the world and hear its solutions. We see the marketing plots of the, the saving graces of this one pill that will fix it all. We look to the world and hear its solutions and often find that the solutions it offers does not bring us the comfort and the peace that we long for. When our faith doesn't enter into the equation, this is what happens. But our brother Job reacted just as the disciples did in that boat, in my opinion. Just as we often react to our fears. But our gospel lesson reminds us of the truth. Reminds us that Christ stilled the waters for the world. May we remember that whenever we turn to Christ, he will be an ever-present Savior for us all, helping us, guiding us through the fears that we encounter in our world. Peace be still. Amen. And now our service continues with our hymn of the day. Please sit back and enjoy. My life flows on.
which the sweet bell far off him that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep singing through all the tumult and the strife I hear that music ringing it finds an echo in my soul how can I keep from singing no storm can shake my inmost calm while to Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? What though my joys and comforts die, the Lord my Savior liveth. What though the darkness gather round, songs in the Giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord, Please stand. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He, was he was conceived by the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit and, born and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel as you prepare for prayer. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you gather your people from east and west, north and south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be made known to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You laid the foundations of the earth, and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation, that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You keep watch over all nations, we pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worldwide and local community organizations and military personnel in their efforts to establish safety and justice. We lift in prayer today 
Christopher Behrens, Angie Galvin, Chase Hartke, Dylan Hornbeck, Jeffrey Kuhn, Warren Kuhn, Michael McCann, Kenan Miller, Hans Peterson, Ryan Query, Brandon Rogers, Sarah Sable, Justin Schammel, Logan Soule, Ryan Taylor, and Eric Wiremiller. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. You are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate us from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You dwell with us in this faith community. We pray for our congregation. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness that through their faithfulness you may be exalted in this assembly. We pray especially for the Allen family, the Beachy family, and the Blair family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. You grant peace to those who are sick and suffering. We pray for the healing of all who are facing health problems, especially Joanne Savino, Maggie Davies, Rachel Holmes, Peter and Mary DeRocher, Hudson Weigel, Mike Malone, Melissa Winslow, Josh Wiles, Christine Brady, Norm Peterson, Bob Laib, Nancy Wenslow, Deb Vandewall, Cindy Slater, Ron Slusser, Kelly Lennox, Howard Miller, Ann Spittler, Ethan Joseph Cozan and family, Billy Paggio, Denise Watered, Bonnie Cummings, Jim Cummings, Paul Doherty, Josh Hines, Kathy Agan, Jennifer Brown, Norm Christensen, Shirley Grosinger, Susan Wieselmeyer, Bill and Lois Wolf, June Scott, Pat Kozan, Brittany and Josh Hurd, Kirk Wieselmeyer, Harry Coleman, Marilyn Barlotta, Michael Pronti, Dan Haupt, Sharon Caruana, B. Stevens, and those we name aloud or within our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost their children. Bless and strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Peace. peace. God's peace. peace. Lori, peace. God's peace out there to you all. God's peace at home. God's peace, Miss Francis. Blessings. Blessings on this day. And now, as we share our peace in our seats, um, we prepare for our offering. Um, we, I'll tell you, this last month, the council um, received a financial um, spreadsheet from our finance team, as we do every month. And here we are, coming up to halfway through this year. I am telling you, the giving, uh, financial givings of this congregation has been rock solid. Um, we have been struggling with COVID. We have been separated, distanced. And one thing that has stood true is you. And that, that allows us to continue our ministries here in different ways, in meaningful ways. And the sky is the limit for us as we work to now find the volunteers to help us pull that together. Those come one day at a time, and we're going to get there. But Thank you for that. If you did not have a chance to give, the offering plate is at the back. I'll be bringing that. Well, actually, I think the Tom and Tom show, we're going to bring that forward here in a little bit. I'll invite the ushers to bring it forward as they did last week. Um, but uh, wave them down if you didn't get your offering in there. 
So let's sit back now and enjoy our special music by Francis. Lead me, Lord, in thy righteousness. Oh, excuse me. Let me stand corrected on this. This was a recording by the choir, I think, right? I was supposed to have known that. Thank you, choir. And now I invite you to stand for the offertory song. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. And now as we transition into this meal, know that in this meal, fear has been overcome by Jesus on that cross. Fear has been that uh, challenge that we've all been filled with over our lives, but yet through Jesus, that fear is removed. That fear is, is turned into trust and hope and love and compassion. All are welcome to participate in this meal today. If you are at home, feel free to uh, get your elements and participate in this meal with us as community. Here in the sanctuary, this side of the congregation will be invited to come forward in a continuous fashion, and you will receive a piece of bread and hear the words, the body of Christ, given for you. And then you will move over to the wine station, and you will then dip that bread into the darker colored wine or the lighter colored grape juice and hear the words the blood of Christ shed for you and you may consume those elements by removing your mask briefly consuming the element and then returning it in place and uh, moving back to your seat if there are people that would rather receive the communion in your seats just let the ushers know 
and I will come back uh, after communion and communion directly. Our, our service continues with the dialogue. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Taking your bread element for those of you at home and presenting it, know that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. You may be seated as we continue our preparation um, ushers, I would invite you to go ahead and bring this side of the congregation forward as we hear from uh, Francis and Candy share with us Lamb of God.
now, brothers and sisters, may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in his grace now and forever. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, and I'm going to go ahead and ask Peg if she would play. We have our announcement um, little skit put together, so if you would cue that up. more news on our action plans. Welcome to this week's edition of What's New at Bethany. Today we'll be talking about our Youth Opportunities Plan, and I have our field reporters, Max Mosier and Riley Stedge, here to help us. Gentlemen, what can you tell us about the plan in general? Well, basically, the goal is to provide for the youth of Bethany an expanded variety of opportunities to gather together. It might be for service or for fun, but ultimately, it will allow for us to grow in faith and cultivate a network of like-minded friends. That sounds wonderful, but I'll bet there's a bit of preparation involved. That's true, but we have a good team of people working together on this. In fact, we've already completed a couple of service projects. We conducted a neighborhood cleanup recently in the Bethany area, and a couple of kids from my high school joined us for that. We've officially adopted Katie Leary Park, so we'll be working to keep that looking nice as well and we'll be working with the Friends of the Shimon River to do some cleaning up along the banks there. Impressive. So I'm hearing a lot about service projects. What about the Just for Fun? Oh yeah, we brainstormed a bunch of ideas for that. We're working on scheduling some outings for hiking and biking, maybe at Tanglewood or along the Lackawanna Rail Trail. We might take in some sporting events at the air arena or baseball field. We've got bowling, roller skating, and ice skating options. We might even do some boating and fishing at Park Station. But the one I'm really looking forward to is going to an amusement park. Of course, COVID will dictate what we can or can't, cannot do, but that'll be really fun. Oh my gosh, that all sounds wonderful. But that's not all. We're working on outdoor movie nights, picnics, birthday parties. Really, it's whatever we can dream up. And of course, we're looking ahead to the youth gathering coming up in 2022. We'll need to do some fundraising, so be watching for that too. This is fantastic. Honestly, I don't know if it makes me more excited or more tired thinking about all of that. What message do you have for the youth of Bethany? Get informed, get pumped, and, and get, get out there. There you go, kids. Uh. Hey. Can older kids like myself join in the fun too? Yeah, sure. The more the merrier. All right. Thanks so much for visiting with us today. Join us again next time when we'll be talking about our neighboring plan. Till then, have a great week. Well, that was fun. Oops. So the reason I think Miss Lori was feeling so exhausted and tired just hearing all of these things is Today is her birthday, you know. 
right? So anyway, there's a lot of other things that are going on, and as it relates to our youth involvement and youth programs, all are invited to participate in these. We had a movie night here, um, what was it, a, a, a little over a week ago, and please come and enjoy these movies. I loved Coco, and I, don't, I had never seen it before, so it's a theology-filled movie too, so I think maybe you might hear a bit, a bit about it from a sermon, and since most of the adults didn't come, it's fresh fodder for me. So be a part of that. And I know we have a Pioneers game that is already in the works. Uh, there's Faith and Family Night coming up in July. I think it's the 17th of July. So kind of mark your calendars for that. So the other um, in, um, announcements that we have are all listed in the bulletin. But I really want to encourage people to sign up for BBS. Um, I haven't seen too many enrollments come in just yet, but we have time yet because VBS isn't until the last part of July. But well, get your registrations in now. You can do that by reaching our website. There's an electronic um, uh, registration uh, form to fill out there. Or you can see us and we have uh, manual registration forms if you want to do it the old school way. You can see also the supplies that we're in need of, so everybody can participate in making this a wonderful experience for our youth by supplying anything you can here to fill out our needs for this up-and-coming journey. Um, after worship today, I invite everybody here, and if you're at home and if you want to run by, to join us in the fellowship hall for some ice cream. So the kids are going to be serving some ice cream to honor the fathers that are present here today and we're also going to celebrate a birthday so we'll have some cake as well so make your own Sunday. we have different flavors should be wonderful um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head um, but um, maybe we'll talk about it in fellowship time or if there's information else one of the, I mean I didn't mention the outdoor service next week I should do that um, because we are doing something different. We're going to have service outside, weather permitting. If the weather is bad, we're going to move that service in the fellowship hall. And service will continue in a similar fashion as we always do in here, but it is a little bit different liturgy. I hope and pray that people can participate in this as we try to do some things that are a little bit out of the box. After worship next week, we have our social justice task force that are going to do another presentation and join in with everyone in a question and answer period to discuss our biases and our journeys through uh, the injustices in our world. So I invite you now to stand as you're able for the benediction. Go out trusting in God even in the midst of the storms. Arm yourselves only with the weapons of righteousness. Stand firm and before the enemies of life. Put no obstacle in anyone's way. But in every way, commend yourselves as servants of God. And may God deliver you from all that would destroy you. May Christ, Jesus, calm all that would terrorize you. And may the Holy Spirit sustain you in patience, kindness, truthfulness, and genuine love. Amen. Let us enjoy now our closing hymn by Candy and Francis. Oh God, help our ages, our help in the ages past. I can't even talk. Please be seated.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.